Hello and welcome to a new video about contour engineering. Last time we heard the basic principle of how we can design our contour loop with the help of the body plot. This time we are going to talk about the rules for this, for a specific optimization. And this optimization is called optimal amount. Okay, so we're talking about how to design a contour loop according optimal amount. There's a mathematical approach and there's the graphic approach. Yeah? I will mainly explain the graphics approach and only briefly explain how the mathematical approach is, is working. Yeah? Uh, because I honestly like the, the graphical approach more. It's more suitable. I think you don't have to, to, to be aware of so many things. Okay? So, uh, our assumption is that we do have a PT2 system. Here, I already have one PT2 system and we want to control this PT2 system with the help of a, of a PI element, okay, of a PI controller. So, this is our PT2 system. We currently have uh, the natural frequency is 1 per second. Uh, the damping is 5 and the gain factor is 4. Uh, so this is our, our system, this is how it looks. It pretty much turns out that it has two different uh, bands. Yeah? Here one band is exactly at 0 0.1 and one band is exactly at 10 per second. Yeah? So this is this, this damping factor 5, this is causing this. Good, let's also watch the the PI element for this and also already the, the combination, so the open loop transfer function. Yeah? And here we have it. Yeah? The green line of course is now the controller yeah? and the black line is, is the open loop transfer function. This is how this would look like. Currently I have the controller set to gain factor 1 and, and uh, Time also one. Okay. Good. Yeah. I can adjust the time. 10, 20. Yeah. I can shift to the left, right. Yeah. 0 0.1. Yeah. I will leave it at 1. And I can adjust the, the proportional gain factor. Yeah. 5, 0, 0, 1. And shift it wherever. I think it is necessary. Yeah? But where do we think it is necessary, right? Yeah? Let's first take one snapshot of this, how this is currently looking. Yeah? I do have a simulation, a simulation program where I already built up such, such control loop. Okay? So this here is the controller in the middle here. You see, K is currently set to 1 and here I cannot I cannot use Tn, I use Kn, so it's 1 divided by Tn. Yeah? So, but 1 divided by 1 is 1, so it's 1. Okay? Here, this is, the, this is the wanted value, so the set point, so the reference, the reference variable, yeah? and the reference variable will do a jump to 1 at the time 1 second. Yeah? This is, of course, the Comparator uh, here xd we have the difference the controller difference controller deviation here this would be a disturbance I could use uh, I will not use a disturbance right now so this will stay zero uh, and here this is my system pt2 with k equals four and d equals five and the natural frequency omega n is one uh, so this is the system yeah uh, and if I press this button here. This is going to be uh, simulated. Okay. Press the button. Book. Let's see how this is how this is looking. Okay. Okay. Something changed. Yeah. So you, you see the red line is the controlled variable. Yeah? And this here, this jump at one second from zero to one. This is the reference variable, this blue line. Okay? Blue line is the reference variable and this green line here would, would, would be the controller difference. Hmm? We see 
It's swinging, however, it is reaching in the end. After around 25, 26 seconds, something like this, we will reach the final value. Why it is swinging? Well, if we look at here, here where we punch the one line, so the crossover frequency, if we go down, we have not that much phase reserve. And also this here, this does not look very good. Okay. One thing I will do now, eh? I will now change this band frequency. So I will now use exactly, I will now compensate the biggest time constant of my system. And the biggest time constant is here. 0 0.1 per second, so 10. Yeah? And I will compensate this biggest time constant with my controller. And you see what is happening. It is resulting now, the black line now exactly looks at the IT1 element. This is typical. This is what we want to reach with the optimal amount. We want to reach an IT1 open loop transfer function. Okay? This is simply because I exactly put my controller at the same time constant my system has. The biggest time constant of my system is now compensated by the controller. We can see immediately at the, at the phase that this looks, looks now much smoother. There is, no, there is no hump, there is just a transition. It looks better. Here we now have uh, quite a lot of phase reserve at the crossover frequency. So this is Tn. Uh, this is where I put it. Uh, this is already one rule of this graphical approach. Use the highest time constant of your system, compensate it with your controller, uh, PI controller. Now let's change this here also, parameters. I will change this. You see, here it's written 1 divided by Tn. Tn is now set to 10, so I have to write 0 0.1. Okay, now I have 0 0.1. This was our previous. Yeah? Now we calculate. Aha! Uh -huh. Looks better. Much better. Alright? Now we make a transition. Yeah? There's no swinging at all. Where is there no swinging? Because we have now simply a lot of phase reserve here. Now, the only thing we need to do is, you see, now we are reaching this in 20 seconds roughly. We have to take into account that we jump at one, well, at, at only one second we, are, we will change. So we will reach the desired value, the set point with our, with our control variable after 20 seconds. I now change this to 2. Okay? You see, what is actually happening is that I'm shifting the open loop transfer function up. Uh, simply because I gain it. Uh, what means I have now here, now here the crossover frequency going down. I have a little less phase reserve. Uh, let's see how this looks like if I change now here also to 2. Okay, this is our current situation. Now calculate. Aha, uh -huh. now I reach it at 10 seconds. This is exactly what I told you once. Yeah? The higher the frequency is, the crossover frequency, the faster this thing will get. Okay, now, now is the question, where do we have to put this? Where we have to select the crossover frequency? Because actually, if I select too much, I use now 30. Okay, let's see what is happening with 30. Calculate. Ooh, ooh. It's fast, yeah? it's fast, but you see, quite a lot of overshoot. Huh? Quite a lot of overshoot. So the truth must be somewhere in the middle. Yeah? And of course it is. And I can tell you, the rule is, here is the second band. Yeah? So here at 10 per second frequency, I have my second time constant. 
And the rule is to bring the crossover frequency to exactly half of this, yeah, to 5. This is the rule. Now, how to find out the gain factor for this? I will show you, I will show you on a sheet of paper because I think it's easier to understand there. Okay? Okay, so I have drawn now the system on a sheet of paper. I've printed out a border plot. I've just drawn the, the amplitude and I have only used the first approximation, so I never put in these transitions here eh, to understand. Eh? So this one we have compensated. Eh? And we want that here at 5 this needs to be 1. Eh? So we have to find out somehow eh, what is the current gain factor of our system at the frequency of 5. Okay? So here our goal is to, to, to look up what is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here. At 5, we want to have which gain factor do we have. Okay? This is our first step. Yeah? This we want to know. Here. Yeah? <clears throat> now we know this line here. Yeah? If it's double in frequency, we will drop to half. Yeah? If it's tripled in frequency, we will drop to a third. If it's 100 times frequency, we will drop to a hundredth part of it. Yeah? So this is the rule. Yeah? So we just have to calculate now how much more is 5 than 0.1. Yeah? So we are dividing 5 divided by 0.1 always by second and this is actually 50 this is 10th up 50 this is 50 times more all right so if this is 50 times more the gain factor here is only the 50th part yeah so here we have gain factor 4. Huh? So here we have the gain factor 4 divided by 50. Okay? So we are 4 divided by 50. Uh, 4 divided by 100 would be... Uh, 0 0.04 and then only per half so it is 0 0.08 uh, this is the gain factor here 0 0.08 let's see if this fits 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yeah looks pretty nice looks like we've got it we can read it out of the graph as well but not at as accurate uh, so here we have 0 0.08 uh, and now is the next question, how much we want to have this one, right? Yeah. So the goal is that we are here. This is how this should look like. Yeah. So we must shift this up by from 0, 0, 0 0.08 to 1. Yeah. How many times we have to multiply 0 0.08 with 1, yeah? so it's 1 divided by 0 0.08, yeah? so here we have 0 0.08, yeah? here we have 1, and this is actually, uh, I have to look up my calculator, here it is, oh, everything's here, yeah? 1 divided by 0 0.08 is 12.5. 12.5. Yeah? So if I am gaining this by a factor 12.5, okay, then this will be 1. Yeah? And this is exactly where we put our K of our controller. Okay? I will show you at the computer. So now we said 12.5 would be a good 
gain factor. Let's write it in here. 12.5. Uh, aha. Okay. Looks nice. Looks really like we would pinch here at around 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, okay, we have a little bit this transition. I think it looks good. Yeah, 12.5. So I think the math was correct. Let's try it. Yeah. Parameter. 12.5. Okie dokie. This was before and now book. Aha! You see? It's good! It's good actually. Let's zoom in here a little bit. Yeah? Ah. Let's zoom in a little bit better. <laughs> okay! Yeah? So we have slight overswing. I tell you the overswing is around 4 or 5 percent. Yeah? And uh, we are really fast now. Now look at that. At one second we are starting, at a two seconds everything is over. Huh? One second. I mean, first we needed 20 or something like this. So this shift of the frequency to higher values really, really, really is good. Yeah? And this is exactly the jump response of optimal amount governor, controller. Okay? This is how it looks like. Okay, so now we have, uh, this is representing the reference transfer function, okay? Now let's have a look what is happening with disturbances, because, yeah, because I simply put it in here. Yeah? So let's say at 50 seconds we would reach, we would add 0 0.1, so not 1, but 10% disturbance. Yeah? Let's see how this is now. Looking, ah, almost nothing. You see, here the jump response is of course the same. And here at 50 seconds, I added the disturbance. Let's also zoom in a little bit here to the disturbance. You see, here is the disturbance jumping to 0 0.1, and here I, there is almost nothing happening, right? So disturbances are also pretty pretty fine. Yeah? Our optimal amount controller seems to have a pretty fine disturbance transfer function close to zero. Yeah? Almost nothing is happening and is having a pretty nice uh, reference transfer function where we can maintain one up to high frequencies. Good! Yeah? Now let's have a look how this is working with different systems. Now we have used the PT2 system. Yeah? Let's, use, let's use an IT1 system. Okay? I will prepare everything, set up, the, set up the spreadsheet and so on, and then we have a look at the IT1 system. Okay, so now I changed the system. Yeah? You see, the system is now this gray line. Yeah? This is now IT1 element. Uh, the system is already IT1 and I'm using uh, PI controller as well. Yeah? I simply changed nothing in the PI controller. I left left it as it was, but 12.5 and 10. Yeah? Let's see how this is reacting. Here I have changed also. This is here now my system. You see TI 0 0.1 and the PT1 element, the stamping, so an IT1 element this is now, with a time constant 1. This is my system. Here the, the controller is still the same. Let's see how this looks like. Ooh, ah, here we swinging. Look at that. Let's zoom in here. Wow, huh? really swingy thingy. <laughs> Why is that? Huh? Why is that? If we look at the face here, here we are going through and here we have really, really, really low phase reserve only. Yeah? So here we are at minus 90, at minus 180 already, because we have minus 90 from our system and we have minus 90 from our controller. So we start already at minus 180, then we are getting less severe, yeah? depending on where the controller is. 
and then we are getting more severe again and we have, well, there is no, you know, here at an integral system, a PI controller makes it worse. Okay, It looks like for us. Huh? This is how it looks like for us. But we say, hey, 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 what if we are not using a PI controller? What if we are using, our goal is to reach an, an IT1 element open loop and look at what it is. I will 0 0.1 now. Look what it is. We are here steep, then going flat and going steep again. Here this steep, I don't need. Huh? So this means I actually don't need this, this part. The I part from the controller, I don't need. It is already an IT1 system, so just add gain factor and that's it. So we are only using now proportional controller. Okay? This is what we go into too. Okay, now we change to a P element. You see, this blue line is now the controller. And well, if I shift it up and down, let's type in 0 0.1. You see, we can shift up and down. The black line is still is still the the open loop transfer function, and the same rule applies as before. Well, we want to have the the crossover frequency at half of the band. Uh, so the band is currently at one. So we want to have the crossover frequency at 0 0.5, and we just have to find out again how many gain we have here, huh? how much K we have to apply. This is the only thing we have to find out. Everything else is made by, by the system. Okay, I will show you at the sheet again. So again, I used the first approximation. Yeah? Here, this is 10, because this is actually 0 0.1 was our integration time. Yeah? And here, this is 1. Yeah? So here we are at 10. Yeah? Here we are at 10. At the frequency of 1, we are at 10. So where are we at the frequency of 0 0.5? Yeah. So actually, here we want to know 0 0.5, how, where are we? Yeah. This, is our, this is our goal. Okay. So we know 0 0.5, 1 divided by 0 0.5 is 2. Yeah? So 1 is 2 times more frequency than 0 0.5. Okay, I have to mention it. Yeah? <laughs> this means the gain, if this is now only half, the gain will be doubled. Yeah? Factor 2, factor 2. Okay, so the gain factor at omega is 1 we have 10, yeah? and that omega is 0 0.5, yeah? it's the half frequency, so we have double, double gain factor, we have 20, so here we are at 20, okay, and now how many times with which factor must we multiply 20 that it's getting 1, well, the gain factor, Kp, is 1 divided by 20. Okay? So it's 0 0.05. 0 0.5 would be 1 divided by 0 0.05. This would be then 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 this looks like this. Huh? Then we are here at 0 0.5. 1 2 3 4 5 here. At exactly half the frequency I have, this is the Kane factor. So let's switch back to the computer and see how this looks like. Yeah, so let's enter 0 0.5. Book! Aha! Uh -huh. 0 0.05, of course. Looks better. You see, it immediately noticed uh, my mistake. Okay, 0 0.05. Looks good. Looks like really at half we are, we are here at 0 0.5. Yeah? Well, I think we can try this here. Yeah? So, parameters. 
no iPad, please. No, we don't need integration part. And here we have 0 0.05. Okie dokie. This was with the PI controller. Now let's see how this is how this looks like. Boom. Again, very similar to our first approach with the PT2 element. Looks exactly the same, I can tell you. So the reference transfer function looks good. So this is also working with an IT1 system. I just have to use another controller. This is basically the rule to, to, to reach as good as possible an IT1 transfer function. And I use the controller which can compensate the correct amount of, of, of bands. If I have a PT1 system, I will explain afterwards because it's not that easy with PT1. I will explain afterwards. So, well, looking good, I would say. Yeah? Let's see. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah? A little overswing. Again, around 5%, exactly the same as before. Now, let's only have, also have a look at our, at our uh, disturbance. Yeah? So we'll also add disturbance and again 0 0.1, so 10% with disturbance at 50 seconds. Yeah? Let's look what is happening. Woo. What is this? Scale? This doesn't look too good, right? The, the reference transfer function seems to be nice. But the disturbance transfer function, look at that. I mean, we are not at 1, we are at 3. The disturbance really kicked in. This is not disappearing at all. Huh? This is an issue. This is an issue with integrating systems. Uh, the disturbances do not disappear. Do not disappear. Uh, because we said, remember, disturbance transfer function, the gain of the controller must be significantly higher than the system. Well, the gain of the controller here is not significantly higher than the system. Uh, far not. I mean, here we have 0 0.05 and here we are at 50, something like this. This is not significantly bigger. This is significantly smaller. It's exactly the other way around. Okay, so this is why we see this. Yeah? The disturbance transfer function is not good at all. I will show you also at, at a sheet, sheet of paper, what is happening there, how you could calculate. Even the math turns out. I yeah? will show you. Okay, so let's have a look on the math behind, okay? Let's remember our transfer functions and so on. So the system transfer function is this. This is an IT1 element yeah, with this TI and T1. And this is our controller transfer function, or regulator transfer function. It's just a KP. Yeah? So this means our FO, yeah, our open loop transfer function, yeah, is actually KP divided by STI 1 plus ST1, okay? And if you remember, the disturbance transfer function, yeah, FZ, is actually the system transfer function divided by 1 plus FO, the open loop transfer function. Yeah? So let's write this down. Yeah. So this is 1 divided by STI, 1 plus ST1, yeah, divided by 1 plus, and here we have just KP, and the rest is all the same, STI, 1 plus ST1. Yeah. Let's bring this to the same denominator here, 1 divided by STI 1 plus ST1 yeah, divided and now 1 is STI 1 plus ST1 divided by STI 
1 plus st1, this is the 1, right? And then we have kp divided by sti 1 plus st1. Okay. And now I have everywhere the same denominator, so I can say baba, of we the same, goodbye, arrivederci, or whatever. And what is left is 1 divided by, I will turn this around because I like it more, kp plus sti 1 plus st1. This is my disturbance transfer function. Okay. So this means if we do have here our transfer element, okay. here is my disturbance. Okay. This is my input. And here I have my x, uh, my controlled variable. Here I have my fs, uh, fz from s. Uh, that's it. Uh. Here I have my disturbance. And here I have my x. Uh. And my x, of course, is the disturbance multiplied by the transfer function, which is actually fz from s. And I can tell you, if we, if something in time is a jump, so z from t is 1. t bigger than 1, 0. A jump. Then z from s is 1 divided by s. Okay. So actually, if we want to calculate the jump response, and this is the jump, yeah, our x from s equals, and now the jump multiplied by this. Yeah. And now remember, yeah, one one thing we mentioned about the Laplace transformation, yeah, there is an there's an final value theorem, yeah, end value theorem. Yeah. If we want to know the the time where we will where we are going to end up, yeah, the value where we're going to wind uh, end up in, in the distant future. Yeah. So we had it like this, Lemus. x from t, for t equals unlimited, is the same, then s going to zero, yeah, s multiplied by x from s. Okay. This was, was one property of the, of the Laplace transformation. Now let's have a look at this. We are writing here Lemus, s going to zero, yeah, s multiplied, and now I will put in this here. 1 divided by s, fz from s. So this, I just put in here. So this will go away. So we are ending up at Lemus, s going to 0 from fz from s. So this is Lemus, s going to 0. 1 divided by, and now here is kp, plus sti, 1 plus st1. I will simply put in 0. This is something. This is 0, 1, 0. So we are ending up at 1 divided by kp. Yeah. Actually, what we wanted to see is 0. Yeah, because in distant future, this x, we want to have it zero because this should not have any influence on x. Yeah, but we are having one divided by kp. Ooh, not good. Should 
should be zero. It would be nice, but it isn't. Maybe we take also a look how this looks like for, for our previous system, yeah, the PT2 system. Let's have a look how this looks like for the PT2 system, if, if it really turns out to be zero, if the math is correct. Okay, so let's have a look how this looks like for our PT2 system. Uh, there's a PT2 system with two time constants, yeah? and here we said we are using a PII controller. Okay? So let's see, let's see what this means. Yeah? If we are again calculating our, our disturbance transfer function, Fz, what is our system? Divided by 1 plus system multiplied by controller. Yeah? We end up at, uh, let's write this, Ks divided by 1 plus st1, 1 plus st2, divided by 1 plus, and now the same, ks, gain factor of the system, 1 plus st1, 1 plus st2. Okay, and now if r multiplied by kb, 1 plus 1 divided by stn. This is how this looks like. We could even make the same trick as before. So we say this is Ks divided by 1 plus st1, 1 plus st2. And now down here we have again 1 plus st1, 1 plus st2 plus ks kp 1 plus 1 divided by stn and o divided by 1 plus st1 1 plus st2 okay and again arrivederci auf wiedersehen goodbye this term huh? so our fz from s equals ks divided 1 plus st1, 1 plus st2, plus ks kp 1 plus 1 divided by stn. This is our disturbance transfer function. Well, we will not uh, calculate it further. Yeah? We just use the same as with, we've done here. Yeah? So as input, we are again using the jump. So we are again calculating the limus yeah, from Fz from S. Yeah? Pretty much the same what we've done here yeah? to calculate the disturbance. What is left from this disturbance? Yeah? This we want to know. Yeah? So we're calculating limus S going to zero from Fz from S. This is Lemus S going to zero from Ks divided by uh, and now 1 plus st1 1 plus st2 plus Ks multiplied by Kp 1 plus 1 divided by stn Okay, let's simply bring this to zero. This here would be one. Yeah? If this is zero, this is one. This is one. Yeah? So we have here one plus Ks, Kp, yeah? one plus unlimited. This is going to unlimited. And something divided by unlimited, infinite, is zero. Good. Yeah? Somewhere in the future, we don't know the point in time because this depends on these parameters as we have seen, but somewhere in the future, the disturbance will disappear. 
Huh? So for for a PT N system, it looks to be good. For an IT system, it does not look to be good. Okay. I already mentioned in reality we never have a PT1, PT2 system. We always have a PTN system. Huh? We always have a PTN system. Usually we have a PTN system either with one dominant time constant yeah, or with two dominant time constants. So it behaves somehow like a PT1 or PT2 system. However, we have to take into account that at higher frequencies there will be other bands. Yeah? A usual way to deal with this is that we are summing up all the small time constant to one replacement time constant. Huh? So actually, what I'm talking about is, if we do have uh, a, PT, a PTN system, and we only have one dominant time constant, So it looks like something like, something like this, Ks divided by 1 plus st1, this is the dominant time constant, and then there are a bunch of taus, tau1, 1, 1 plus s, tau2, and those taus, they are minor, they are much smaller than this t. Yeah? Then we use a replacement time constant, which is tau1 plus tau2 plus tau3, plus tuk 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 yeah? and we actually what we actually use is we replace this with ks divided by 1 plus st1 1 plus str the replacement time constant okay this is representing all minor time constants so it looks like a pt2 system We replace a, PT, a PTN system with one dominant time constant with a PT2 system. Okay? Here we are using PI controller. Okay? We will compensate this T1 with our TN on the PI controller and that's it. Okay? If we have two dominant time system, dominant time constants, So it looks like Ks divided by 1 plus st1, 1 plus st2, 1 plus s tau1, 1, 1 plus s tau2, and so on. Yeah? We again using a replacement time constant, tau1 plus tau2 plus tau3 plus and so on yeah? and we transfer this to ks divided by 1 plus st1 1 plus st2 1 plus str okay it pre it's the same approach however this time we have two time constant yeah therefore we need to use a p i D controller. Okay. With the I part I can compensate one, with the D part I can compensate the other one. Okay. And if I have an IT1 system, I use a P controller. I said we looked into this and this is not working very well, right? What to do about this? Well, if we have systems with integrating part, 
we cannot use optimal amount. Or we can use, but we have to live with the disturbance. How the disturbance is working. Yeah? Uh, this means if the if the gain factors are very small, the disturbance will have a big, big, big effect. Okay. Uh, therefore, we use another approach, the symmetrical optimum. Yeah? How the symmetrical optimum is working will then be explained in the next video. For this video, I really think it is enough, right? Yeah? So, next time, symmetrical optimum, there we learn how we can deal with integrating systems. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.